everybody's running from here. There's been sh shots fired here at the concert or something. We got to get out of here. This is at the concert. Everybody's running. There's someone shooting. I'm Teresa Bowen and this is my husband Nels and we're from Logandale, Nevada and on October 1st we attended the um, uh, Route 91 Harvest Fest. One of my biggest customers, best friends that I've got in Las Vegas calls me and says hey I got some tickets to a concert you, you and your wife want to go and I'm like well let me talk with her because we're usually busy on the weekends and she's like sure we'll go. I didn't even know what it was. That's, you know, I'm in Vegas, but I don't pay attention down there. And she said, yeah, we'll go. So they got, the girls got it set up and we went to dinner and went to this concert. And like she said, it was a beautiful day. And then chaos broke out. And I was just thinking to Teresa that we should get an Uber because it's going to get crazy here. And then all hell broke loose. The guy started shooting and... We were sitting in a VIP seating. We we received VIP tickets from some friends of ours that went with us. So there was four of us that went total. And we were sitting in the VIP seating to the right of the main stage. And um, great day, you know, the concerts were great. The performers before were awesome. It was a beautiful day. Jason Aldean came on. He was about into his third song. And um, we heard something that sounded like fireworks. We actually turned to each other and um, said, was that fireworks? And I, you know, me being me, said, I think that was gunfire. And, um, but nobody changed how they were um, acting at the concert. She's telling me them are gunshots. I'm like, no, it's not, it's fireworks. People would be dropping down there or getting down. They weren't, like she said, nobody believed it. You know, Jason Aldean kind of looked off to the right where the VIP seating was like kind of looking right at us. It's like, you could tell that he had heard something. And you know, um, the concert goers in front of the stage that were all standing were still there. And then the second round came. The first round was probably sounded like to me, eight to 10 shots, like, just rapid fire and then the second round came and it was much longer than that and um, we said we got to get down because I you know we all looked at each other we got to get down so we got down in front of our seats and the VIP was kind of a elevated area looking down on the people standing in front of the stage there and some people did get down in the front and others just didn't take it serious at first I mean they, they were still standing Jason Aldean said something, turned, ran to his band. They all ran off of stage. The lights went down and people were still standing up yelling for him to come back on stage. And you could see people texting on their phones, standing and some were down and some were standing. And the third round came and it was a long, repetitive, you know, rapid fire again. And um, everybody started to run then. I think they realized that, you know, they were, he was shooting right over our heads because our backs were to the Mandalay Bay and we were under a tent cover sort of in this VIP section that was there. And um, people started to run by the third round and um, the, cloud, the crowd just cleared out, but you couldn't go, it was like the shots were coming from the Mandalay Bay, so they were coming from that right side of the stage. So you couldn't really exit out that way, but people started to exit out that way. Most of them ran to the back of the venue, which there was no way out. There was a 12 foot wall, there was chain link fence, the airports on the other side. Um, they were climbing over the fence, they were trying to go under the fences, they were running onto the runway. Um, but if you went out the Mandalay Bay side, he, was, he had actually started shooting people out the exit as they exited out that way. And um, we kind of just laid low by our chairs for a while. It seemed like 10 to 15 seconds between rounds. And so after everyone that was in standing room only cleared out, we started down to the bottom of the VIP section and um, we're gonna make a run across there. And they had turned on these floodlights from the stage and I'm sure it's so people could find exits to get out, but it also kind of lit it up like a 
football field down there and um, we were going to run across the open area and we started across and the, the gunshots started again and so our friends proceeded across and the, the firing, the shooting started again and um, they went on and we turned and ducked back under the bleachers and um, the bleachers, there was probably a foot of space. Seriously, they were in enclosed bleachers, not like a football bleachers. And I kind of just slid underneath there and I couldn't believe the number of people that were under those bleachers. And Nels, he's a lot bigger guy and that just wasn't gonna happen. And he just kind of got down in front of the bleachers and um, he said, we gotta get out of here. Where the people were standing was probably three quarters people, all the people were gone. And my friend says, we gotta go. And he, they took off across and right out into fire. And Teresa says, no, we can't go that way. And they kept running and she went under the bleachers and I, I remember just squatting down and just seeing people and trying to figure out where it was coming from. We didn't know whether we were running into bullet fire, away from bullet fire. When we went to get down by the bleachers and the standing room only had kind of ducked, ran out from there. And I remember being under the bleachers and looking straight out across and there was a bunch of turf that they had put down for the venue. And, and there was people out there laying there and you don't know if they were dead, hurt, whatever, but everyone else had left and there was just scattered people. And, um, and that's when we just got to the bottom of the stairs of the VIP section when we first started to run. And I'm like, this is real, this is real. But I never felt panic through the whole thing. Like I just like, okay, we, we just got to do this. Let's just do this. It's just crazy because if I would have heard a bullet, seen somebody get shot, I'm sure I probably would have just drug her out of there. But we didn't. We just kind of waited, we, looked at our path, and took the path of least resistance and listened. And like I said, you didn't know if it was. It was kind of ricocheting. Like you could hear it off of the bleachers and things like that, or the 10 roofs of the bar things that were there. But as far as like, did we have gunshot come right? nearest I don't know I don't think so but that's just why how you didn't know where it was coming from because it was you could hear the ting 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 but he didn't give you much time between shooting and it was you would get up and run for those few seconds and then you'd have to get down again and I just remember seeing people laying out there you didn't know if they they laid there because they couldn't get up and run you know you heard afterwards some people just said they stayed there. They just were fear stricken and, and couldn't run or if they were hit. Some of them you knew that were hit, but it was, it was just devastating to even see that, to look out, be laying on your belly and look out and you can see all these people laying out on that turf. It was devastating. So as soon as the shooting stopped for a few seconds, we ran and um, I remember running through, there was a little food court there and we were running through there and the shooting started again and there was those um, porta potty trailers and we kind of dove towards the porta potty trailer and I remember there being a police officer there and we kind of, I pushed up against him and we all got down right there. Went through there and there was the food trucks with the air conditioners and keeping food cold and drinks and there was a guy sitting there, I can still remember, in his chair with his feet up, just wondering what was going on. He didn't even know what was going on. And I, <laughs> Teresa was videoing and I'm like, let's get out of here. That's all I wanted to do is get out of here. I had two thoughts, my daughter and her, let's get out of here. And she, she was videoing, it was just chaos. I mean, you don't ever understand it until you're in the middle of it. When it stopped again, we started to run out the side of the street that the Mandalay Bay was on and an officer stopped us and said, don't go this way, they're shooting people in the street. And so he sent us back into the venue and um, we just made our way down through the tents and through whenever the shooting started, you just get down where we could. I remember there were some police cars we got down by, there was some concrete barriers, we just kept running. And um, we got to the back side of the wall that everyone was helping people over, you know, getting them over the wall. And it was, he's still shooting. We got all the way to the Hooters Casino that was the back parking lot, butts up against the venue, and we were almost to the entrance. You could still hear him firing. I think it went on, they said on the news for 11 minutes. It seemed much longer than that. But 
Just the scene over the other side of the wall was total chaos. There was people hurt, there was, I, I videoed some of it. Um, not people hurt, but just the amount of blood that was on the sidewalks. And I don't know what made me video it. And I videoed it when people started running too, because I don't know, I just wanted. <laughs> Our daughter to know we were trying to get out if something happened. We finally got back through there, weaved our way, and there was kids. That was the worst thing for me is freshmen in college, I'm sure they were, but they're, I have a daughter that's a freshman in college, and you just wish that they would have never seen anything like that because now they're scared to go to school. They don't want to go to any, you know, that's what you do in college. You go to events and you have fun, and it's supposed to be the funnest time of your life. And this, Sorry, SOB ruined it for a lot of people in Las Vegas, including myself. I, I don't, I don't even know. We walked and we seen kids and families, and and we had no idea what was going on behind us. It was quite the scene, and people were loading hurt people in cars, and they'd set up a triage area there that they were already starting IVs on people, and people were helping and. We just tried to keep moving because the shooting was still going on and he could shoot to the back of the venue there and and I'm not sure, you know, how much longer it took us to get down to the, the entrance of um, Hooters. And we went in there and people were under gaming tables, under slot machines. I went into the women's restroom. There was men, women, children all down in the restroom at Hooters in the women's restroom um, like it was a bomb shelter and they were yelling at me to shut the door, shut the door. I mean, it was just chaos. People didn't know if the shooting was coming from someone in the street or from, you know, were they at the, at the concert shooting people? People were just hiding everywhere they could. And, you know, people were just running into any casino they could get into, running through the back doors, through the kitchens, through anywhere just to get, you know, inside somewhere from the shooting and it was just chaos the whole thing was chaos and I don't you know I don't even know how we got out like then once we did get out we had to walk three miles to our car and because we had gone to a restaurant previously and ubered over to the event and um, even three miles from where the concert was, there were still panicked people running across the streets, people were running through the stoplights. I mean, three miles from there, people were that scared. I mean, we were still having people pass us on the sidewalks running. Um, we found a college girl hunkered down in the bushes alongside the street, and she was like, she didn't know how to get back to UNLV, and she didn't know when to stop running, and it, it was terrible, it was awful. Our friends took a different route than us leaving and they experienced a lot different than what we did because they kind of got into the mass that got bottlenecked towards the back that was trying to climb the fences and things and it was pretty horrific. Um, our friend, they did, they weren't hurt but they did, you know, when she got home she had blood splatter all over one side and she had a dress on and the back of her dress was all smeared with blood and she says, I have no idea where any of that came from. She said, you're just running and they're running beside you and you just, and you could hear people calling for, you know, people in their family and it was sad. You just got to kind of move on from it. I mean, something you would definitely never forget and never want to go through and you just have that compassion for everyone that didn't get out as well as we did. I mean, we weren't hurt and there was a lot of people hurt from a lot of things like climbing the fences, from being trampled, from um, ricochet, from you know taking direct hits. Um, it's hard. Um, uh, I don't know. What do you think? I'm just not gonna let it. Change. I think Tuesday I had an event to go to and I didn't go and I thought that lets someone else win. I don't know that we even know how to process it. We drove all the way home 
all the interstate exits were closed and we had to drive down through town and find some way to get on the interstate. And when we did get on the interstate, you want to talk about an eerie feeling, we were the only car on the interstate. They had closed off so many streets and everything, and we finally did get up there. And I said, I don't think we're supposed to be up here. And he's like, I don't care, we're going home. And I don't think we spoke to each other the whole way home. And I don't think we spoke about the incident until Thursday. I don't think we talked about it. I don't think we said anything. We just, I mean, it's just a bad deal. Unfortunately, I had um, my phone in my pocket and I, the last person I called was our daughter. And I dialed her accidentally while we were running, I guess. And she kind of heard the whole thing. So that was pretty devastating. Like I said, there was a, a little jackpot on Tuesday night and um, I wanted to go and I love to go and that's something that I do. and. Um, Tuesday rolled around and I just couldn't, you know, I just felt so heavy hearted about everything and I, and you know, the thought of going out in public and people wanting to talk about it and um, I just didn't go and the next day I was really mad at myself. I thought, you know, when you don't go, you let him win. He's changed the course of my life. You let him win and I'm just not going to do that. But. That's what I felt like, and you know, you feel like staying home. You feel like staying home and not going anywhere. I mean, Nils has to go to Vegas to work, and um, I know he didn't go Monday, and Tuesday was, was hard, and he, you know, his reaction to things is just to be quiet. He just stays quiet until he's ready to talk about something, and. I know that's got to be hard to drive back in there. I haven't been in there. I just, I'm just be honest with you. I just, but you know, even going to work Monday morning, I have an excellent staff, and they were concerned. And I just walked in, and I, I remember telling him, and "We're not talking yet, okay?" And everybody just like nodded their heads, and I just went on to my office. And I remember just staying in my office all day, and I, I didn't really come out and talk to anyone because I, I just wasn't ready to um, face all of it. So, And there was so much more than what we experienced when you watch the news. It was just so devastating how people that ran different directions and did different things, how they were so changed by everything that happened, you know. So, you know, we keeping our mind off of it more just by doing more chores. That's what I said. I text someone the other day. I said, I think the barn hasn't been any cleaner because I think we go out and we, we busy ourselves and he cleans stalls and I don't think the horses have ever been cleaner. I think they got washed and groomed and, you know, spending time. We've been in the arena a lot this week practicing roping and, you know, practicing my barrels and things like that because that's therapeutic, you know to get out with the horses and spend some time doing that. And I think that's, that's our therapy. I know that's his therapy. I don't think the horses can have a cleaner stall than they have right now. So that's kind of how that we, we have handled it this week, just busy in ourselves in something that we love, like the horses. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, like I say, it's still, I didn't even believe it was gunfire when I got in the car. I mean, I live in the United States of America. That's not supposed to happen. You know, and, and yeah, like, it's just so crazy. And it's going to change us. I just got to keep going. I, I Like I said, I just stay busy. You stay busy and you just kind of let it process. And it's human nature to ask and every person I see they knew about it because we shared it on Facebook and, and our friends and everybody you see or talk to on the phone wants to ask you about it, so you repeat it. And I don't even want to turn the news on anymore because I don't want to hear about anybody else or, but I'm still curious why. That's my biggest thing. If I just knew why, I don't think I'll ever know. Yeah, I team rope. I used to rodeo and I got a family and I wouldn't trade it for a minute. But 
we all do it. Thank God Haley got into it. And it's something that we just do, like it's, we just do it because it's what we, I've done my whole life. Grew up on a ranch in Wyoming and um, I, we'll just keep doing it. Thank God we've got them. If we just had to come in here and sit, and, you know, like go into a townhouse or, it would probably really eat us up. But we got stuff to do and we're gonna go through it and uh, keep going. That's why I always tell my wife I'm gonna live here every day like it's my last and I'm always in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know, the positive thing, it's, we just kind of aware. Anybody that goes thankful. to something like that, thankful, yeah, we're, we're blessed that we're here today. I think something positive from just being there at the concert, I was asked before was, were people just climbing over people and was it, they trampled and it wasn't that feeling at all. Everyone was helping everyone. If someone was down in front of you, you helped them up. If, if someone, you know, they were definitely dragging the people out that were wounded and going back for them. And when the concert area bottlenecked down to where they were trying to climb over the fence. They um, were helping people over the fence. It wasn't just every man for himself. I did not get that feeling at that at all. And the way that Las Vegas is portrayed as a, um, you know, it's a sin city. It's a fun place for everyone to come and have fun and there's not a sense of community. Well, they're wrong about that because there were so many ambulances on the scene, so many people that weren't first responders to start with, and they were helping people and, um, you know, private vehicles taking people to the hospital, and the way the hospitals were able to handle that um, was pretty impressive, because that's a lot of people. I've been an ER nurse for many years, and that's a lot of people to take on at once, and they and they did it. They, they took them in, and. So, you know, that, that myth that Las Vegas is full of tourists and there's not a sense of community, I really felt like there was. Because they were all tourists, for the most part. I mean, there were some local people there, but people from, flew in from all over the country to go to that thing. You know, from Florida to yeah. New York or whatever. Canada, and, and, yeah. And everybody was helping everybody, and I've, we've seen a lot of stuff that, I don't, nobody ever needs to see, but I'm just glad we didn't see the worst part of it because it would really scar me then, I think. It was definitely a sense of community, and you know the country. Us being, I don't know what you want to call it, from like a rodeo family, and that's country music, and it's all kind of the same thing. I just really got that sense in there. Like, you know, I've been asked several times if people mostly trample other people. I just didn't see that. People were really trying to move as one out and help everybody out and it was pretty amazing and stopping when they could have just scaled the wall and got out and stopping and lifting people over walls and pulling out fences and helping them get underneath the fences and um, like that guy that came over and opened the fence for us to get back off the street and back into the venue it just wasn't that it was everybody was helping everyone